What's going on? It's Devin Funches here, and you're listening to Scoop B Radio. Scoop B Radio, live and direct. Make sure you subscribe to Scoop B Radio podcast on all streaming platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, to name a few. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Scoop B. And make sure, while you're at it, you check out this guy, Devin Funches. He joins the program. Brother, what's going on? Man, relax, bless, and highly favor. How you doing? Chilling out, Maxin. Like the Fresh Prince would say. You know, you cool and the coolest guy in the game, I'm telling you. Sir, yes, sir. Thank you for that. And thank you for all that you do in multiple sports. Unless you've been um, living under a rock, Devin Funches is the first former NFL player to make the transition and signing a pro basketball contract. How cool is that? Uh, it was, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I um, I just been chasing it for a long time. I understood when I hung the shoes up a long time ago and got blessed enough to make it to the NFL. Um, I never thought that it was gonna come back to my life till it did. And then now we broke the news that I was going on my basketball journey way back. And then now to to ultimately get this contract, uh, it's just been a blessing. And it's just. Just taking it day by day and understanding what's what's to come next. It's just hard work and the grind and along the journey. So uh, you uh, came to all things Scoop B Radio first to uh, give us the news about uh, this transition two years ago uh, where you talked about your desire to want to play and you've kind of moved around and you played a game in Columbia uh, to kind of kick off this whole uh, process. What is the game competitively like over there in Columbia? Uh, Columbia was different. It was uh, it's a fast-paced game over there. You got the fans that's electric. Um, I was going to get some guys from Raleigh, North Carolina, Chicago, and New Jersey. So it was that was the imports for the other team, and then you had everybody else uh, from a little bit of everywhere. My team was is consisted of uh, Dominican Republic. Panamanian and Colombian all over the, 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 the country. So it's just different, fast paced, different from our game. And it's just gun and run, running gun. Back in April, uh, we reported that you were going uh, to make that transition. What has uh, been some of the feedback that you've gotten from some of your NFL counterparts? And have you heard from any NBA players about what you're, what you're doing? Uh, my my uh my colleagues they they ecstatic for me they hype for me they um they they just waiting to see the journey waiting to see me continue along the journey see when they can make it out to games things of that nature and then Duncan Robinson reached out and um, I talked to him I talked to him through my uh chiropractor so that was pretty dope uh endless amount of other guys just telling me congratulations my trainers along the journey some guys I didn't hoop with. Taylor Statham and that whole family that that took me over to the Philippines. So it's just been a blessing. It's just uh, been ecstatic just to, to to keep it going and see how many people back in. So my eyes lit up when you talked about Duncan Robinson and the connection there. What are some of the things that if you can share uh, that he shared with you and and, and uh, how's he feeling about your process? You guys both connect through Michigan, so that doesn't make sense. No, nah, I mean, Duncan, it go all the way back to when we were at school. Duncan fixed my shot, actually. Uh, I was coming, I was I was just going to their open gyms all the time and things like that. Him and Karis would invite me, Karis would invite me over. Karis would invite me over and um, I would be with, um, I'd be with the, with the gang playing against some of the guys that they had just come into town. And Duncan said I was shooting my shot too flat, so he fixed it up for me. And just along this whole process, my little cousin Mila, she's a part of the girls' basketball team now. The coming up um, class of uh, at University of Michigan, he told me just keep going, keep shooting, make sure I stay consistent. So just telling me to stay consistent, stay in the gym, stay loving it, stay falling in love with the game, and then everything should work out with the work ethic I have. Who we talked about on the football side, but on the basketball side, who are some of the players that, as a kid, you grew up watching and maybe patting your game after? And who are people saying that you play like? When I was young, you know, everybody wanted to be like Mike, so I always had that. I was trying to jump over people and do all the dunks. I kind of, I looked at LeBron. Um, I, the Pistons had the big five, so I tried to 
have my game, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, uh, Sean C. Rip, and, and Tayshawn. Tayshawn had to run down blocks. Sean C. was just Mr. Big Shot. Rip Hamilton always running to his spots, getting open. And then you got the other two people that's just dominant. The Wallace is just, just dominant. So I pretty much was on that. But now it's just getting into knowing that I'll be a role player, understanding my role in the, in the basketball game, in the basketball circuit. Where do I see myself? Obviously, I, I converted for multiple positions in football from tight end to wide receiver, back to tight end. So the versatility aspect in that. So 3 and D, if I look at 3 and D, some of the coaches have been trying to tell me P.J. Washington, watch a lot of P.J. Washington, P.J. Tucker, um, Drew Holiday, um, people like that, just because I know I'll be playing some defense and just understand the IQ of that, that spot, understanding the lanes, the passing lanes, understanding my spots where I go hit the floaters, knowing that I got to hit that knockdown three in the corner, when to lift, when to go, when to shake down, all that type of basketball knowledge and awareness of the court. So i just been been on that. Obviously, I got to watch the greatest players that's playing right now. I love to watch the artists at work uh, and, and the Kyrie just because he's just been a player that I've been watching since I was a young guy. Um, my little cousin, he told me back in the day, Ant-Man was my my player um player comp and just to see him grow into just because they using the same AAU circuits things of that nature down him with him playing in the uh, CP3 for CP3 team so just seeing Ant-Man's development from when he was in high school down there to Georgia to now what he's doing in the NBA is just like humble young man um jack all trades he can do it all he hitting it at three level scores so just been fun to watch him and his development still a young kid at 22 so he going to grow into be the face of the NBA right now. So it's just fun to watch him and see him get more confident over time. You, um, when we talked initially back in 2022, um, we talked about um, your desire to play in the NBA. And some people kind of laughed at it. But, you know, now playing overseas and any iteration of NFL Network talking about it, just the Internet talking about it, the blogs talking about it, every time we talk about something – uh, either when you and I are texting or on camera, it seems to move. Um, the G League, um, for many people, is an effective path uh, to get to the NBA. You having played for the Carolina Panthers, um, I'm curious, could you ever see a path for a G League uh, appearance and maybe the Charlotte Swarm scooping you up as a player and making that transition there and then maybe the NBA? I mean, you got to go, you know, it's just all business at the end of the day. And, you know, it's, it's different levels to it. And I would love to, to get that, that G League opportunity. I had to try out last year with the with the Ontario Clippers and, and to know that I got another trial with them and speaking with the GM and then the Swarms. Um, the Swarms regional day is coming up in September. So, I mean, it makes sense business-wise, you know, just to go into the markets that I'm a part of. Um especially that who gave me my opportunity in the NFL and open up so many doors and and going and part of being in the Super Bowl, having the, the city rocking and things of that nature. So business-wise, you know, you look at the numbers, can I fill seats, can I do all that, but then can I play at the end of the day? And this, I can't wait to, to go see that opportunity in September, get out there, compete with the guys that's going to be there and, and see where we can go from there. Nah, man, that, that would be a lot of synergy from appearing in the Super Bowl uh, as a member of the Carolina Panthers to potentially going to the G League Swarm. Uh, that would be a full circle moment for a lot of people in the Charlotte area. I think it would sell tickets. What say you? Nah, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scoopy Radio, uh, Devin Funch is joining us. Uh, as I was doing my research for this interview, I learned that um, you are working with one of the top skill coaches in the world in Tremaine Dalton. Um, I'm curious, how has he helped you uh, with your journey on and off the court? Uh, it's just the, the mindset that I had to get into. You know, I have mentors in the football space, you know, mm -hmm. just teaching and showing me some of the legends that went to Michigan, my cousin Antonio Gates, just guiding me through that process, but doing something out of the norm with – with with the NFL player going to go try to play basketball, this is just not that much help. People don't take mm -hmm. it as serious because 
basketball is a sacred sport. It's a sacred sport because you play it internationally, worldwide. It's, it's hundreds of millions, if not billions, of people that play the game. So it's, it's just something that's sacred, and it's and it's looked down upon because of people see my physique still and say, why you just don't go play football and things of that nature? I would if I could, you know what I'm saying? So just him giving and taking that that time out of his day, showing me and teaching me what it would be like on the day-to-day -day grind of what I'm going through in these different countries or who I had to network with, what I had to do on my own, knowing that there's not that same American money behind some of these these programs mm -hmm. that I'll be with. And then some of the, the IQ that comes along with the game, the workouts, how I'm supposed to set my workouts up, the different moves and combinations that I would just move, keep it simple, stupid, you know, kiss and this – don't do too much. We do the same thing in football. Just keep everything simple. You do the fundamentals and you and you understand that it's a one, two dribble, pull up, and then use my explosiveness and my and my footwork going to the basket. It's just he just been educating me all around and, and it's just been a big help. I like that. I like that. Devin Funches joins us on Scoopy Radio. Subscribe to Scoopy Radio on all, all streaming platforms and make sure to follow me on Twitter. As well as Devin Funches, the man who is transitioning from football to basketball. Tell me something. Um, transitioning from the NFL to basketball is a big step. Tell me about your support system um, that has believed in you as you're trying to accomplish another uh, milestone. Ah, uh, shoot. I got, I got pretty much the same people, you know, a um, couple of different people. Uh, obviously, everybody still has a life known and things of that nature but my godfather he's always been there i got my brother back home will he's been training me as i as i'm in in michigan and just to my family just checking in here and there you know making sure that i'm safe and seeing what country i'm in doing what i'm seeing what i'm doing on, on, on the daily and things of that nature so it's just it's just been fun you know taking this ride and and just Going and go do something that nobody ever done before, and it's just you know, it's a with being overseas and being away from everybody. It's just a lot of lonely nights of just dribbling, listening to music, understanding, write my goals down. I'm going to go accomplish something, and this is what I'm going to do to come back stateside for everybody just to to be involved in in everything, be accessible to them, and just allow me to entertain them once again. So it's just been that long journey of being away but knowing eventually i'm um, come back so everybody can just take part in and celebrate i like it i like it. a couple more questions you um flew to ireland to work with david roche um to get your body right for basketball tell me more about what you and him have done and how he's kept your body moving in both spaces uh it was it was a transition he um basically just gave me different techniques different workouts um obviously he has different um technology over there to actually get my body to peak to peak form and the things that i need to do but just transition and just like how you heard mike and how he had to switch his training regimen different workouts different structures um always try to you know do two sports not not really get honed in on just basketball so play a little bit of soccer when I'm over there. And uh, he just showed me just different mobility exercises to, to to get my different muscles activated and just have it at that. But the machines that he have and the technology just to get me to where I need to be is, is the second to none. But you're more than qualified to answer this question, so I'll defer to you. Having made the transition from football to basketball, do you think LeBron James today – could seamlessly transition from playing in the NBA and suiting up a tight end for one of your favorite NFL football teams? Uh, to, to be honest, uh, tight end is actually probably the hardest, one of the hardest positions to play uh, on the football field just because you have to know all the line calls and then you have to know the, the, the routes and their combinations and what the receivers are on too. So that would take some time for him. Uh, I know he's a freak of nature. I know he has all uh, the assets and, and the necessaries to, to try to make him what it is. But the mentality of going to go do what it is, I don't think so. He can be a red zone target for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's complete tight end. I always just go back to my cousin. You know, he's the best one to ever do it in my eyes, Antonio Gates. And 
you see him run blocking. You see him doing everything. I'm not talking a, a wide receiver tight end. I'm talking about a complete tight end. And and and, and I can't disrespect him and his gold jacket efforts. So I don't see him seamlessly just making that transition. Who in the NBA could you see today if an NFL call an F NFL team called him and said, "Hey, we want you to shoot up." They could seamlessly just show up today and play. I would say Russell Westbrook, um, with the energy and the motor that he has, uh, you go put him at wide receiver. Literally, he can go be a Justin Jefferson, so to say, and or, and or you go make him. I mean, it's it's hard as well too defensive back just because you're going backwards but you can just put him at that free safety and let him roam just because he does have that that quick burst and and he's always in shape so russell westbrook would probably be the only guy that i would say can, can make it i'll take that and raise you this when you look at football if an nba team called any of your nfl brethren today and asked them to suit up in the nba who would you bet your money on uh, right now, um, who playing? I seen some of the guys' little tapes that that's been put out and things of that nature. Uh, Justin Jefferson. I just say Justin Jefferson just because he he has all the footwork, the shit in his routes. You see the pace that he plays at, things of that. So I just say Justin Jefferson put him in that category to to make that transition. You may mention of Antonio Gates, and you, you talked about just his athleticism and more. Have the two of you had conversations about you playing professional basketball? If so, can you tell us what that's been like? No, I, I, don't, I don't talk about it. I don't talk about it. There's a lot of competition within the fam. So it's just he just tell me congratulations. He tell me keep going on. Like as soon as I came into the, the whole football realm, and he just told me just work, uh, just work how you work. And understand there's gonna be a grind every day. You got the IQ because you played when you was younger, so it is what that is. Don't nothing change on that aspect. So he just telling me to work, and that's just what I know how to do: is work, work, work. Make sure that I put myself in the best position. What is in your playlist currently that's getting you through workouts and even on and off the plane? Ah, uh, you gotta go. I go Lauren Hill, peace of mind, and mm. it's a nine, it's a nine minute song, nine minute song, and I just get get straight to it, understand, you know, speak to speak to myself, speak to the higher power, uh, speak speak positivity into what I got going on and understand that basketball is the piece that I'm in right now and just to dribble that ball, shoot that ball, and, and I put that on repeat all day long. I like it. I like it. You answered all my questions. Did I leave anything out while I had you? No, nah, that was it. That's cool. All right. I'm with it, brother. You're off the hot seat. Thank you so much for your time. Nah, I appreciate you, Scoop. My man. Well, likewise, I value you.